Hi, I'm Fixer Joe, and I just renovated my kitchen. Here's how it went. As you can see, our kitchen's uh, pretty dark. Uh, it's separated from the dining room. There's only one window and a glass door as well, but that goes out to a covered porch, so it doesn't let a lot of the light in. You can see from our dining room here, though, there are three windows in there that uh, let in a lot more light. So the big thing was to go ahead and take down the wall in between. They start by taking fixtures apart. Protect those and I'll save this one for later. I removed the light, but I'm still going to need a light. So I installed a temporary fixture, just a single light bulb. Start by taking up the floor. I salvage this and I'm going to use this in a different project. Take apart our pantry. Uh, it served its purpose, but didn't ever function very well. Now we're salvaging the cabinet doors. Save those for any projects. Always nice to have a door that can put on a piece of furniture you're making. Also salvaged the oven and the range hood and uh, sold those off. All right, now for the plumbing. Need to disconnect the dishwasher, remove that, save that, and reinstall it later. Now out comes the sink. Now I'm cutting the caulking between the backsplash and the counter so I can remove that. That's going out in one piece. Down come the doors. And out go the cabinets. Never liked these cabinets. They weren't built very well. Original to the house. Dark in color. So I was happy to see them go. So if you see in the background through the window, we actually used our back porch as a temporary kitchen. So the refrigerator went out there. We already had a sink. Grill worked as an oven slash uh, burner, had a cooktop on it, so that was kind of nice. I don't know how else we would have done this without uh, that temporary kitchen. I found this in the wall. It was pretty funny old uh, Kodak film. There was no pictures in it. That was just a packaging. Fun and original construction. I don't know how that got in there. Down came the bulkhead too. Never cared for this. So I was happy for it to go. Now, tile job, I actually did that one um, when I renovated the kitchen a second time, a few years after we moved in. So, my work kind of went out the door there, but on to something better. I was definitely happy to see this pantry go. It stuck out, just uh, changed the flow of the house. I didn't really care for it. It was inefficient. Okay, now the serious demolition begins. I used a carbide tip blade on actually an oscillating saw. Um, that cut pretty good, a lot less mess than the grinder itself. You can see I let the kids draw on the wall uh, before we start demolishing it. That's not every day that uh, you let your kids draw on the wall, so they have fun with that. And down it goes.
But I didn't have a dumpster, essentially. I just bagged up all of this, piled the bags, and sent them out to the curb uh, not too many at a time. Try not to make them too heavy for the garbage men, but uh, that's how, how it went. So much more light in the kitchen already with the wall out. Of course, there are power lines in the wall there, so I had to be careful working around those and reroute those. Luckily, this wasn't a load-bearing wall. This would have been a real big challenge if I had this as a load-bearing wall. All right, so the gas lines for the oven and for the cooktop. I'm not gonna have uh, two separate item devices here. I'm just gonna have uh, one single unit. So I'm really running the gas line uh, just for the, the range itself. Um, that's gonna be sticking out proud of the wall there. The wall's also coming out, so I have to uh, shorten up my heater section. This was a big pain trying to solder these lines back together. It was a necessary step. Also didn't want to burn down the house there, so I had to have some shielding and some wet rag. All right, marking location where my studs are gonna go. I'm putting a vent in. It's gonna be a downdraft vent for the range top. And in my bottom plate, I'm going to leave a gap for the vent to go down through the floor. And I'm laying the top plate, measuring across, and I'm going to mark my stud locations on the top plate so I can get them line up, saves time. I have to recess this section here so I can get the vent as high as possible. Uh, that inch and a half really uh, makes an impact. All right, time to put our electrical boxes in. So these are all locations I'm going to need for outlets and switches. Four switches on that little knee wall. And, and some outlets where I didn't have some before. Of course, where the pantry was, there were no outlets. I'm marking the location for recessed lighting. Got those out with a roto zip saw. Got some help from my son drilling holes and we can do our rough electrical. And they put this stud back in here. I don't know what they were thinking or why that was necessary. Maybe uh, additional support for load bearing, but that was a pain to get through. Now I pull feet and feet of wire. Putting together a junction box up on the ceiling there. This is going to be hidden. Um, this is going to be where I can reroute all these uh, light electrical lines here. A junction box down the floor here as well. Get my power feeds up to the new outlet boxes I put in. It's going to power for the range itself. All right, reconnecting the light. 
Now I have light in the dining room again. I'm running the yellow Romex. This is for our power. It's a heavier gauge wire. Now the vent that I had didn't fit uh, the register, so I had to modify the register I bought at Lowe's. So I'm cutting that shorter there, adding a little piece to fit into, so a little sheet metal work. Some pop rivets in there. Well tape fits. Now I'm putting together my vent sections. Put the location on the floor. Cut it out. There goes my downdraft vent. Throw that with some screws from underneath. Now the holes in the floor there where the wall used to be need to be filled in to make it flush. Same thing with the pantry. Now I'm removing a section of the drywall there and actually putting in half inch plywood. It's going to be important. This is for uh, hanging cabinets. Uh, it gives you a nice solid surface to screw to. You don't have to try and hit a stud and find a stud. Time to drywall. And we're going to start with the knee wall. Marking the location on the back side for where all the outlets are. Let's cut those out with the red zip. I'm doing the back side as well. This wasn't necessary. I'm going to put beadboard over this, but that wasn't stiff enough, so I wanted to have some drywall on the back side of it. Actually installing drywall over top of the existing drywall behind it. Uh, that's because the thicker wall in the dining room uh, needs to transition to the thinner wall that's on the opposite side of the room uh, by the back door. Um, so I'm using uh, a little bit thinner drywall as I go across here to try and make this transition. I just drew a, uh, uh, I actually put a chalk line on the floor uh, to get a nice straight line to know what that transition is supposed to look like. The pantry side was a lot easier. Installing some blocking up in the ceiling. That way, I have a solid surface to screw the new piece of drywall into. Scraping the last little residual tape off of the ceiling there and I'm actually cutting out some section of the drywall to make that smooth transition because it is mudding time everybody's favorite job so the first part is always to tape up the joints some holes in the ceiling that I gotta close up those are going to require some tape. I missed a spot here, but I drywall. Prefer the paper tape over the fiberglass mesh tape. It just seems to be a lot uh, stronger to me and easier to work with. 
Now I'm marking out where the cabinets are going to go. That way I don't have to do mudding joints that are going to get covered up anyways. So that saved me a lot of time. Did the same thing on the opposite wall. You got help from the family. Now I'm drawing a line here and putting a piece of masking tape. This is gonna make a nice smooth transition break point from the textured plaster to the flat wall. Done this in other sections of the house, uh, renovation jobs. Just makes a nicer transition. Add a lot of drywall mud to this section to go from a thicker wall to a thinner wall. It's a feather. Tape comes off and it's time to sand. Sections on the ceiling there where you see circles are actually indents that I shine the light across that I wanted to remove. It's actually from the first drywall job I did when we moved in. Now it's time to clean up the mess. So I'm just using some uh, TSP and water. It's a good cleaning agent, especially for walls. You get all that dust off before we paint. If we paint, it's prime time. So long green, so long blue. It's funny to see just a portion of the wall painted, but that was all that was necessary because the rest was going to get covered up by cabinets. Now that the priming is done, it's painting time. waiting so long, now it's time for cabinets. Always good to have a dolly and extra manpower to move these into place. The first thing I'm doing is installing cleats on the top of the cabinets and so I have a place to nail the crown molding to. Putting some spacer blocks in, 
trying to level out this cabinet. I installed a pleat on the wall that's used to install the cabinets. You see I have some smaller spacer blocks there to get the right height. And you clamp the cabinets together, drill through with a little pilot hole, and then screw them together. Putting the cleat on the other side of the wall makes it very convenient to hang the cabinets. They're already level. Just make sure they're plumb as well. Put these two cabinets together in the same process, clamp them together, get the face frames lined up perfect, and screw them together. Extend the cleat across the wall to the other cabinets. Uh, you can make sure they're plumb to the wall as well. Put this cabinet in above the fridge. Now I'm marking out locations for cleats that are going to go on the ceiling. That's for my little drop down. That's where the recessed lights are going to go. Also cutting the trim pieces is going to box this out. Cleats go up, and then I nail the trim pieces to those. I'm installing boxes for these Halon LED lights. Now these actually change color. You can go from a, a brighter white daylight look to a soft yellow light. I'm uh, partial to the other side. And I cut out this piece of masonite that's going to slide into two grooves inside the trim pieces. Same thing above the sink. I'm going to box this out uh, for a recessed light above the sink. If you recall, the soffit was there before, and I don't have that to locate the light, so I built this little soffit above the sink. Now the lights go in. It's time for crown molding. Always helps if you can put the pieces together before you put them up, uh, make sure they're square. This is where having uh, square cabinets makes a big difference. This video does not do it justice on how difficult crown molding is if you ever tackled it. Now I start in the floor and I'm going to start in the corner with the Lazy Susan. So same process, I'm going to level to the floor and to the wall, and then work my way in both directions. Leaving a space here for the range. Small cabinet in, and next to the sink. I'm working on the opposite wall. I call this the coffee bar. I need to measure out and start cutting out holes for the location of plumbing. So I have a couple water lines come up through and then the drain line through the back and underneath. I need to reconnect the drain line for our sink that goes outside. And then, so I have to vent underneath the sink and solder on new fittings uh, for our water supply. And a little panel wall to the end here, to close in the fridge. Now it's time to work on the island. So I'm just making sure I'm getting everything squared up. I have to add spacer blocks in between the cabinets because there's a gap on the back side. And now I'm gluing on the end panels. Here's a bead board I was talking about that I put on the knee wall. Now it's time to put the rest of the recessed lighting in. And I'm working on finished electrical. All right, now it's time to paint the heaters. These are original to the house, and they definitely need a good coat. And that brown did not match, so I'm going with an oil-based finish. 
I fabricated these brackets to hold the countertop. And I'm installing those to support that. All right, time for the range to go in. So I have to connect the gas, electric, and that fit like a glove. Dishwasher's going back in, running the drain lines and the fill line. I'm installing a plug on our island. Never had this feature before. It's nice in case you want to have a mixer or something on there. You can come up with the across. All right, putting the window sill back in and the trim around the window. Putting a threshold piece under the door here, preparing for flooring. And I'm putting floating laminate floor in, so I have under laminate going in first. My process is to actually do the whole strip uh, from end to end and then block it in place. You can see I have spacer blocks as well. You need to allow room for expansion. Whoops. <laughs> you can see our little kitten there. We found him out in the yard named Rocky. I'm working in the dining room. Finish that job up. You see I'm wearing a mask. I had a battle with COVID for the first time. So protect everybody. Heater panels go back in place. Here's what the kitchen looks like, ready for countertops. Now I wasn't there for the countertop installation, but here's a shot afterwards. These guys did a good job. Our counters came with a built-in sink. Oh, that was nice, like this big dish sink. So installing our plumbing fixtures, our normal faucet. Use a plumber's putty, installing our drain fixture, and install our P trap underneath. Cut off our temporary connection, and I'm going to glue that up. And install the dishwasher drain. Time to test it out, and we have water again. This faucet has a nice spray feature as well. We also have our filter of water. All right, time to finish trimming out the door and I'm putting the shoe molding on the floor. Light fixture is going back in place. Thermostat's in the corner, so wire that back up, and I got a new doorbell as well. All right, our shelf goes back up, and so does our bolting board. And now I'm going to work on the backsplash. So I measured where the cabinets and windowsill are, and I laid that measurements out onto the garage floor. And now I'm cutting the glass towel. So I'm using a continuous bit diamond blade on my grinder that did, did the trick pretty well. Applying mastic and laying in the towel. And all that cutting ahead of time saved so much time. Now time to grout the whole job. See I installed some under cabinet lighting and just a LED rope strip that's stuck underneath and plugs into the outlet near the sink. Give you a tour of the finished product. Really liked how the kitchen turned out. A lot more light, a lot more sunlight from the dining room windows. Really love the cabinets, good finish on them. These are well-born cabinets, highly recommend them. Happy with how the countertop turned out. It's not too light, not too dark either. It's a good trade-off and mix of colors. Range fits in pretty well. Range vent. Um, Works pretty well, but it could be higher. Here's my vent.
There's a hutch my father made. I found a good location for that since it was on the wall we removed between the dining room and the kitchen. Here's a look at the coffee bar. You can see we have a light above the seating area. It really is nice to have our kitchen back. <laughs> Even though we had a temporary kitchen on the back porch, uh, it's starting to get cold out. And it's a little, uh, little chilly out there to be cooking. Also nice to have our dining room back. Here's a look at our counter seating. I didn't have stoles whenever I shot this video, but we got stoles after. And it's a great place for the kids to sit and work on projects or schoolwork. For me to sit working off my laptop, making videos like this one. Again, I'm really happy how this whole project worked out, all the planning paid off. I really hope this inspires you to take on your own kitchen renovation. Thank you for watching.